And all of these things are can be so crippling to the point where it feels like, man, will I ever be free from these things? And these are all things that I've struggled with throughout my life. When we are driven by conviction, we are freed from the need to please people. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you have been following along with my videos, you know that I prepped some Bible study videos and content ahead of time in preparation for baby coming. But as you are watching this video, it is November 25th, which is the day after our due date. And so it's just crazy to think that as you're watching this, baby could be here, or I could be in labor, who knows? But I do know that probably the first place I'm gonna announce it is over on Instagram. So if you wanna know if the baby has been born yet, you can hop on over to my Instagram. And if they have, I will have posted about it. But that's just crazy to think filming this, that baby could be here as you are watching this. How wild is that? Anyhow, today's video, like you can see from the title, we're gonna be talking about how to stop being a people pleaser, how to have a godly confidence, how to overcome the fear of man. And all of these things are, can be so crippling to the point where it feels like, man, will I ever be free from these things? Will I ever be free from the need to please people? Will I ever be free from just fear of people? Will I ever have confidence? And these are all things that I've struggled with throughout my life and questions I've asked. And I've been in those places with all of those things before where it just felt like I would never have that freedom. And so if that is you, if that's the place you find yourself in, I want to share some encouragement with you, some biblical encouragement that we are going to find from Galatians chapter one. And as a side note, I actually did an entire Bible study with me series going through the book of Galatians and unpacking it chapter by chapter. So I'll have that linked above if you want to check that out and just dig more into not only this topic, but everything else that the book of Galatians covers, which is fire by the way. And so I'll have that linked if you want to check it out. But as for today, we're diving into this topic. If you haven't already, please please be sure to subscribe to my channel and then give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful or encouraging, which I pray that you do. So this is going to be a little bit less structured than some of my Bible study videos in the sense of not having like three main points or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of talk and share things from the heart and things that I see here in the passage, but I do have some notes written down from things I wanna make sure I touch on, so you see me looking over here, that is why. But the first thing I wanna do is read through Galatians 1, 6 through 10. And so if you have a Bible, go ahead and pull it out and join me. If not, I'll have the text up on the screen as well. So this is Paul talking to the Galatians. This is a letter that he wrote to the church at Galatia. And again, I go more into the context of the book as a whole in my Bible study with me series, specifically the chapter one video. So check that out if you want to, but just for a little bit of context, he's writing to the church at Galatia. And here's what he has to say. He says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I now say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So the first thing I kind of notice here in this passage is that as Paul is speaking to the Galatians, he is not afraid to speak a very bold truth. He does not back down. He does not shy away. He literally says in verse eight, in Galatians 1, 8, he says, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached, let him be accursed. He says, even if it's an angel from heaven, like I don't care who it is, if they're speaking something contrary then to the true gospel, let him be accursed. And then not only does he not back down from that, but he actually doubles down and repeats himself in verse nine, saying the same thing again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. And so Paul here again is speaking a very bold truth because there were other versions of the gospel, false gospels, 
gospels because there is only one true gospel that were sort of floating around at this time. And Paul is saying, if it's not the true gospel, let that person be accursed, which is a very bold thing to say. And I think that Paul is unafraid to speak a very bold truth precisely because his goal is not to try to please people. And I think that when our goal is to try to please people, that is precisely when we're tempted to soften the truth or to maybe skirt around the truth or to sugarcoat it a little bit to try to make both others and maybe even ourselves more comfortable. But something that I have come to learn in my life and in through reading this passage is that when we are driven by conviction, we are freed from the need to please people. Let me just give you kind of a recent-ish example from my own life. Again, baby could be here as you're watching this, who knows? But when Tyler and I first found out that we were pregnant, we quickly realized that there's so many decisions that come along with having a baby and I know that this is only the beginning of just a lifetime of decisions or at least 18 years of decisions we'll be making for this little baby and that can feel really overwhelming because you want to make sure you're making the right decision and I've already talked about in so many different videos that I'm somebody who tends to really struggle with decision making because I want to make sure I'm making the right decision and I fear like am I making the right one is this what God wants me to do and then there's also that whole other component to it of what will people think but when you're pregnant you're immediately met with so many decisions you need to start thinking through. And in the beginning, as we first started researching all of these things, I was really overwhelmed, not only about making the right decision, but also this whole other element of what are other people gonna think, you know? As we think through our birth plan and what we wanna do and what we think is best for that. What are the opinions of people gonna be? As we think through, you know, how we're gonna raise this baby or different health decisions we'll make for them, what are people's opinions gonna be on that? And that was really a thought in my mind of just like, what are people gonna think and what is the right decision? But something I found is that as I began to research those things more and as Tyler and I began to talk through those things together and become more and more sure in the decisions we knew we wanted to make and more and more confident in the decisions we knew we wanted to make, that fear of what other people may or may not think about any of those decisions slowly began to fade away because we had this conviction and we really believe this is going to be the right thing for our baby. And so that fear of what other people might think slowly began to fall away. And I think that's just a general truth that when you are so sure of something, it really doesn't matter as much what other people think about that because you are grounded in your convictions rather than looking to the reactions of people to give you that sense of assurance. And I think that's what we see in Paul as he's saying these things is this sense of conviction that he was so sure in something and that was the true gospel. He was so sure in that, that he wasn't afraid to speak bold truths and he wasn't afraid of people's reactions because of his conviction in the thing that he himself was speaking and sharing. And even though the truth he was sharing was maybe uncomfortable, I think the reality is, is that some Sometimes truth is meant to be uncomfortable. Sometimes it's meant to disrupt our assumptions or the way we are living to bring us into correct alignment with how God has called us to live. And so simply put, when we are driven by a desire to serve God, we are freed from the need to please people. It is this conviction that frees us from the fickleness of people's opinions. And so I know this might sound like it's over oversimplifying it, but really I believe that the antidote to any of these things that we're talking about to people pleasing or to wanting to find a godly confidence or to overcoming the fear of man, really the antidote is to seek a conviction rooted in Jesus. If people pleasing is what the struggle is, be so passionate about what God has called you to do that you're grasping less at what you think may or may not make other people happy. If confidence is the struggle, be so sure of what God has said about you that you are less concerned with what people may or may not 
think of you. Again, this may seem like oversimplifying or even the bigger question of great, but how do we actually go about doing those things? And I think the biggest encouragement that I can offer to you from my own life is that it happens over time. And it's not to say that I never struggle with people pleasing or that I am always confident because that's definitely not the case or that I never struggle with the fear of man because none of those things are true. But when I look at where I am now with all of those things versus where God has brought me from and just seeing that there's a lot more freedom in those areas, I see that God has slowly brought me that freedom and slowly made those changes over time through rooting my convictions in those things, rooting my convictions in him and who he is and who he has said that I am in the purpose that he has on my life. And I just wanna encourage you again that those things happen slowly over time in prayer, in asking him to show us what his purposes are for us, what his calling is for us, to show us more of who he is and who we are in light of that, and to dig into his word consistently over time where he reveals those things to us, where he reveals to us who he is, what our purpose is, what his will is, and who we are in light of who he is. I've shared this video before in my How to Study the Bible videos, but I love the analogy of water over a stone that you know when you look at these massive rocks in like a river that are really smooth and just you can just slide down them, you have to ask yourself, how did those rocks become smooth? Did they become smooth because one drop of water hit them one time? No, those rocks became smooth because water was continually rushing over them over time, smoothing out those rugged edges and giving to them their shape. And the same is true of our hearts and of our souls and of our spirits, that as we spend time with God, as we're consistently pressing into his word and spending time with him in prayer, he is giving shape to a heart that can rest in the freedom and the peace and the knowledge of who he is and of who we are in light of that. And that is where we begin to develop that conviction in those things that frees us from the fear of people. And so I just want to encourage you with that. My channel is filled with videos that help you dive more into God's word, videos that talk about how to build a relationship with God. And I just want to encourage you more than anything, Jesus is the answer to everything. Truly pressing into him is going to bring about the freedom, the peace, all of the fruit that we could ever desire. It comes from abiding in him and apart from him, we cannot experience it. We cannot experience peace or joy or fulfillment or any of the fruit of the spirit that talks about in Galatians 5, we cannot experience those things apart from Jesus. It is only through staying connected to him. And so I hope that that just encourages you to press into him, to spend time with him. And let me know if you'd like me to make a video addressing any part of this more specifically, just maybe a video on like things that God says about you or the character of God. I made a video talking about the sovereignty of God, but if there's any other aspects of his character you'd like to see me address, let me know down in the comments below. But I hope that this video was helpful and encouraging to you. If it was, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know something that stood out to you from the video down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.